Peter Blum. I work with Pivotal. I'm a platform architect. I'm very excited to be here. I've been coming to Cloud Foundry Summit for a long time. I remember Bosch days. They were the best. I guess that's because I'm a wacko and I like Bosch. Um, and with me, I got Scott Frederick. Yeah, and I'm on the Spring Engineering team at Pivotal. Uh, I work on a product called Spring Cloud Services uh, for most of my day job. We're going to feature that in the demo here. And uh, so, so I'm a platform architect. I work a lot with customers. Um, and, you know, one of the things that uh, always comes up is, you know, how do we encrypt credentials? How do we secure things? How do we um, become compliant in whatever you want to be compliant in? And it often ends up with CredHub. So we've been uh, submitting this talk to Spring One, Cloud Foundry Summit, all these different things. Spring One and, again. Yeah, Spring One again. And so it always seems to come back up on the radar. So actually, this time we went through and we uh, this time we went through and we um, redid our presentation. So if you want more of the executive pitch, go take a look at our previous presentations. If you want more of the actual hands-on, what you can do with CredHub. That's what you're going to get today, so hold this on. Version, this version is fewer slides and more demo, and you're welcome. Yep, yep. So, so be excited. Hold on. You know, buckle your seatbelt. Let's go. Um, by the way, buckle your seatbelt uh, in case we have a fire. The exits are behind you. Uh, this was a mandatory slide to put in here. Um, just don't trample each other on the way out. Okay. All right, so the story of CredHub, um, you know, I think, I think it's pretty easy to understand if you've ever deployed Cloud Foundry, how hard it is to generate credentials for Cloud Foundry, right? Uh, there's a multitude of CA certs, PEM, keys, all this stuff all over the place. And uh, you know we've all probably used the OpenSSL uh, CLI. I learned from my Windows friends, you know, it, that's not even existent on Windows. So if you're a .NET guy or a Windows guy, it's, it's hard to create all those credentials. Um, and, and understanding really what those credentials are for and how to configure them is hard, right? Um, and so once you get beyond that, though, then you know maybe one of your operators is such a unique guy, he ended up uh, taking a job for double the salary somewhere else. And with him, he took all your credentials. So you lost all your credentials. They leaked. Uh-oh, how do we go back and reconfigure them all, right? So leaking credentials is really easy. And then coming back and actually changing them is hard, right? So it's like, hey, we lost that guy, and now we have to go retrain somebody to actually figure out how to recreate and configure them all over again. So with that, that's where CredHub came from, right? It's a centralized point. I really like this graph. I think it really um, reiterates sort of, you know, that CredHub is, is able to generate, encrypt, rotate, and all with access control, right? So all around your credentials. It's able to control that access to them. Um, so inside of, you know, we we're talking about Cloud Foundry projects and all this, um, you know, where, where, is, where is CredHub? Well, in Bosch, there's CredHub. Inside of Pivotal App, uh, sorry, inside of the Cloud Foundry application runtime, there's CredHub, right? And, and there's even integration into Concourse. Um, and so CredHub really is, is becoming a, a key point to the whole entire ecosystem of Cloud Foundry. Um, the one last piece that we're missing here is the Cloud Foundry container runtime. And um, that's coming along. You know, I think there's going to be some integration there with the uh, Kubernetes secrets. So it's coming along. Stay tuned for that. Um, so with CredHub, what is CredHub, right? Well, it's a, it's a microservice, you know, it, and it talks to... Um, an authentication provider, right? So how do I know who is actually able to access credentials? Well, I have an authentication provider. Um, in most cases, that's going to be UAA through OAuth 2. Um, and then once I have authenticated and made sure that you know, Peter Blum is able to see credentials, where do we store those credentials, right? We store them in a SQL database. And before we store them in that database, of course, we want to encrypt them. So by default, we use AS-256 to encrypt them. Um, you can actually add your own encryption providers if you want on AWS. I've never done it. It's like $5,000 for this uh, hardware module. So I don't really have that kind of change to throw around. They don't pay me that well. Um, but, you know, if you're they in... Should. Yeah, they should. I know. <laughs> Always doing these talks. So. Um, and so how do we actually interface with CredHub, right? So we've actually, you know, how do we get in there, log in, create these credentials, rotate them, and encrypt them? Well, there's actually three different ways to do that. 
Um, and really, the first one, you know, Crit Hub was originally designed for, for platform level credentials, right? And so the first one is, is the Bosch config server. I want to emphasize Bosch config server, not Spring config server, okay? Difference. Um, different implementation, too. Mm -hmm. So, um, so anyhow, in, inside of there, um, you, know, you, you might never um, understand what the Bosch config server is, but when you go in and you create a Bosch manifest and you use Cred Hub, um, you're actually using an abstraction called the config server there. Um, so if you're using Bosch manifest, you're using Cred Hub. If you're using um, the Cred Hub CLI, so we'll, we'll have a little demo actually showing the Cred Hub CLI. So there's the Cred Hub CLI, and underneath the covers, the Cred Hub CLI is, of course, using the API wrapped around Cred Hub or you can do that with any REST client you want. Um, my favorite today is Golang, but you know, choose your flavor, right? Um, so the Cred Hub API was kind of alluding to that a little bit. Um, you know, it's broken down really into you know, the operations and authentication, right? So authentication-wise, you can use OAuth 2 with UAA, or you can use MTLS with a cert and a key. Um, pretty simple. Um, we'll have an example of using UAA and logging in. Um, we didn't really want to get into the weeds with MTLS, but if you really do, let me know. I'll show you that. Um, as far as the operations, right, they're really broken down into, I want to just focus on the first two here, but there's really two operations. There's the credential operations, and then there's the permission operations. So we can get, set, delete credentials, and then there's an extra one in there that I skipped over called generate credentials. And so what that is, is you can actually define what you want for a credential, but you don't have to say what the credential is. Right? So I could say I have a password, and I need it to have X characters in it, and I can do all that, and, and I can ask CredHub to actually generate that for me, and I never even know what the password is. Um, you can do that with CA certs. You can do that with all these different credential types at the bottom. So you can see the credential types are any value, any password, any user. User is consisting of a user and a password any JSON, which we use in Spring Cloud Services, yep. um, any certificate, any RSA key, and then any SSH, right? And SSH, uh, I kind of had a question about that, and really it's just RSA with a, with a fingerprint. Um, so, and then there's the, uh, the permission, right? So on top of these credentials, there's permissions. So who actually has access to these credentials? How do we manage that access, right? Um, and you'll see as we move through here, there's different ways of managing those permissions. And then, and then there's this really odd endpoint called interpolate. Okay, a uh, fancy word, but essentially it's just for Cloud Foundry. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But essentially, you know, we have this VCAP services that has all the keys. And we want to actually get values, right, out of those keys. And so what we've got is we've got an endpoint that you can just send this whole VCAP JSON into. And what I get out of it is all my secrets, right? Um, and so we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Um, and of course, I want to point out here, there is a whole API documentation right here. So double check that if you ever have questions on the API. Um, and so first, you know, I'm going to start off with the, uh, with the infra infrastructure section. Um, you know, going back to my core with Bosch. Um, so let's, let's show you sort of what that looks like. Um, and so what it really, you know, it simplifies manifests, right? I think that's, I think for me, this is one of the, one of the best parts of it is, is I have manifests that, you know, CF manifests that went from 5,000 lines to 100 lines, you know. Um, and it's all, due to, um, it's all due to Cred Hub, right? So you can see here, I'm, use, I'm just generating a CA cert, and then I'm putting that CA cert inside of my manifest, and that's taking up roughly 18 lines here. Versus here, the way that I'm generating it is, is I'm having CredHub generate it for me, and that's taking seven lines, and then when I want to insert it, I just put in one line, right? So it simplifies it down to one line. And so with that, what do I get? Well, at the end of the day, what I get is I get a manifest that I can then share with everybody in my organization, whether that's through GitHub, however you want to share it, right? And then I'll actually be able to relax the access to my Bosch director. Right, so I can actually have other people log in, run Bosch manifest, and they're not going to see my Postgres DB. They're not going to see my uh, Oracle DB password, you know, my admin password that's in there, right? And so that's a really, um, a really great, you know, feature I think with CredHub. So let me show you some sample manifests that I have out there. So this is another example, right? So I, I deployed Concourse, one with what I call the legacy deployment, which is where we had all of the all of the uh, secrets in there. So is that big enough my for secrets. 
I bigger or is that good? Mm, pretty good. All right, so, so you can see over here that in this one I've got uh, my private keys, you know, my public key, all this stuff in here, right? And uh, to be honest with you, um, I don't even know where I got this stuff from, so. And that's, and that's, I think, how complicated creating credentials is, right? Um, you know, it's, it can be hard to create all these credentials. And so then on the cred hub side, you'll see over here, all of my variables are defining what I want, right? So I've got this worker key that's a type SSH. I've got a TSA host key, SSH, RSA key, and then a typical password, right? And so this are, these are my, these are my um, credentials, but they're not really credentials, right? They're just references to them. And then in my manifest, I have them as references, right? Um, and so what you can see here is that at the bottom, I've got 282 lines on this other uh, manifest with, without CredHub usage. And with CredHub, I've got 145 lines. And that's a small manifest, right? So you can see that you can see the value already with just Bosch manifest. And so if I actually, um, if I come over here and I do Bosch uh, deployments, So you can see here, I've got my secured cred hub, uh, secured concourse and my non-secured concourse. And so what I can actually do is Bosch-D concourse manifest. And so inside of here, you're gonna see all my credentials, right? So here's my, here's my actual, um, my Postgres password, right? And so this means that anybody that has access to my Bosch director can see all of my credentials. But now if I take my other one, take my other uh, deployment here, you'll see that inside of here, my password is simply Postgres underscore password. So it's pretty simple. Um, I think you get the idea. Um, so that's, that's essentially how, how the Bosch integration works. Um, so let's, let's keep moving on. So then let's talk about concourse itself, right? So if I have parameters inside a concourse, you know, I want my application to actually reach out to my databases, right? And I want them to, um, to do maybe username credentials or, or any kind of credentials inside a concourse. Again, I can use CredHub. So there's this integration into CredHub. When you deploy CredHub with Bosch, you can tell it, hey, I want to use CredHub to, to store my credentials. And so here you can see I've got a very simple um, concourse job. I'm not going to go into all of how concourse works. But what you can see here is that I've got a parameter, super secret value. And then inside when I'm using CredHub, it's once again just a variable, right? And so again, this enables the sharing of pipelines. And I don't have to check in those parameter files into Vault or some external uh, configuration system to track them, right? I have all of that built directly right into my manifest or my pipeline. Um, and then, of course, I think that this is sort of an understated value with, with Concourse is that um, I can have access to databases without actually knowing the username or password of that database. And the way that is is because I just have the reference to it. So you could have your DBAs administering your database and changing passwords and doing whatever they want, but I'm over here doing deployments, and I don't ever need to know that password. I just need to know whatever reference it is in CredHub. So I think this is a pretty, pretty cool value. Um, so I have, a, I have another pipeline that I could show you, um, but I think I, think I want to switch it over to you. Okay. I'm looking at time. So. Yeah, so Peter's been talking about how CredHub is integrated with Bosch and uh, Concourse for sort of an operator uh, perspective. Now we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about some things with uh, Cloud, Foundry, Cloud Foundry application runtime, which is a little bit more user focused. Uh, so if you've ever pushed an app to Cloud Foundry and bound uh, that app to a service, uh, then you're familiar with the VCAP services environment variable. That's the way that uh, applications are, ex are exposed to the services that they need to consume. And inside of this VCAP services block, there will be the list of all the services that that app is bound to. And inside of each of those services, there's this credentials block, and that's really the meat of VCAP services. Uh, so if you look at this example on the left, um, this service is exposing a URI that's secured with basic authentication, so you need the URI, a username, and a password to be able to talk to this service. Uh, if it were a MySQL database, you'd have a, maybe a JDBC URL, username, and password. So the fact that these credentials are all in plain text in VCAP services 
um, bother some, some users who want those things secured a little bit more from uh, the user perspective. So uh, now that there is Cred Hub in Cloud Foundry application runtime, service brokers can be enabled to store this credentials block inside of Cred Hub. And once a service broker is Cred Hub enabled, the, the VCAP services will look like this example on the right, where the only thing in credentials is a single uh, reference to a secret stored in Cred Hub. And what's inside of that Cred Hub secret is an entire JSON block. Uh, so we're going to show a demo of what that looks like now. Um, so just to show you what this demo is, we've got pushed two applications. Uh, it's called Fortune Service and Fortune UI are the two applications. I'll show you what those look like. So this is a, an example of like a back-end database serving application. In this case, this application uh, has this one endpoint which is random, and every time you make a call to that API endpoint, let me make that bigger you get one fortune as if it came from a fortune cookie. So that's all this app does, it's very simple. And then the second app is a user interface application that every time you refresh the page on this application, it's making one call to that backend database service, getting a fortune just displaying it. So it's a, a really simple, trivial application. Um, the uh, services that are available to this app. So we have uh, three services here that are provided by Spring Cloud Services, which is a pivotal product that implements the Spring Cloud uh, open source projects. The one we're gonna talk about is the service registry. Uh, so if I go to the dashboard for that service registry service, it's gonna make us log back in again. Okay, so this is the dashboard for that service registry service provided by that service broker. And we can see that the backend service app is registered in this registry and the UI app is registered here. Um, so the way that the UI app knows how to talk to the backend app is to look up in this registry what the URL for that app is so that it can talk to it. It's a better way than like hard coding the route to the backend app into the front end app. So the only reason we're showing you all this is just to show you that these two applications have successfully bound to this service and uh, they're, they're consuming that through the VCAP services. But if we go look at, look deeper at this application, if I do CFENV on the Fortune service backend, and if we go look at VCAP services, we'll first find the MySQL service that's bound to that backend app because it's fetching all those uh, fortunes from a database. And we can see inside this credentials block that this service broker is not CredHub enabled yet. <clears throat> so we see all these discrete credentials uh, displayed right here. But if we go further down and look at the service registry service, it's just got the one credential <laughs> that's just this single CredHub reference. And kind of by convention, the way these uh, CredHub credentials are named is uh, we give it a, a name for the service broker uh, that's implementing it, and this is the name of the type of the service that the service broker is providing, and then this is the GUID for the binding, just to make sure that every uh, credential that's stored here gets a unique name. And then we just put credentials JSON at the end to make it kind of human readable and easy to identify. So all three of the services that are provided by Spring Cloud Services are all Cred Hub enabled, so we just see those Cred Hub references there. That's and nice. I can even... SSH into the container for this backend application. And if I look at VCAP services there, and I'm gonna pipe that through JQ to pretty print the JSON. You can see here the MySQL credentials are raw, but even if you're doing CFSSH and looking at VCAP services there, you're just seeing the the Cred Hub references, so they're even secured inside the container. So these, both of these applications are Spring Boot applications, so they implement uh, the Spring Boot actuator endpoints, and one of them uh, lets you show the environment that is exposed to that application. So this is actually what's in memory in the application. And we can see there's this VCAP block where uh, what's in VCAP services JSON is basically flattened into some flat properties. And just to make that easier to read, I'm gonna uh, curl that here instead. Yeah, that's good. I think that'll work right there. And I'm gonna pipe that through JQ again and sort it just so we can see all these properties really easily. 
So we can see now in this VCAP services, service registry credentials, we've got these four discrete fields, which is the URI for the service registry and the OAuth information that the application needs to talk to that registry. So all we're showing here is that the application in its memory space has access to the raw credentials while CFENV and CFSSH and those other things that uh, users might be able to do don't have that access to those uh, raw credentials. So how is that actually working? Well, it turns out Diego is doing a lot for us here. So Peter mentioned when we were talking about the CredHub API that there's this really interesting CredHub API endpoint that's called Interpolate. And that endpoint is very aware of this VCAP services block. So to that endpoint, you can take a VCAP services block with one or more of these uh, credential sections in it, pass that whole thing to this Interpolate endpoint to CredHub, and it's gonna walk that data structure looking for any of those CredHub-ref keys in there. And whenever it finds one, it's gonna reach inside its own database, resolve that, and what you're gonna get back is a VCAP services block with all those references replaced with the raw credentials. So that's a really powerful endpoint that CredHub implemented just to make this workflow as easy as possible. And in, the, in this Cloud Foundry case, what's actually happening is when Cloud Controller tells Diego to stage an application, Diego is building that VCAP services environment variable block, and Diego knows that it needs to pass that off to CredHub, have CredHub interpolate it, and when it's actually starting up the application and building that application environment, it's exposing that raw VCAP services. Um, and this is really powerful because it means none of your applications have to change. They don't have to be CredHub aware. They don't have to explicitly be going to CredHub and making that call themselves to resolve these credentials. Um, it's all done automatically. It's really nice. So Spring apps, Ruby apps, Go apps, uh, whatever your app is, it automatically gets the VCAP services as the raw credentials, uh, just like you're expecting today. Scott. Yes. There are still ways you can get in there. Um, so I think the, probably the answer to the question, if kids you didn't hear the answer to the question, is sometimes when you want to do CFSSH is because you want to get like the database credentials so you can test the database connectivity yourself. You probably in this sort of environment have to get an operator involved and have them give you some additional permissions to be able to get in there and see the raw credentials. Um, there are ways to do it. We debated about whether to show some of those ways in this presentation, but we decided not to turn it into a CredHub hacking session. But um, <laughs> basically, you just have to have the right credentials. You have to have the, the credentials, um, and we, we'll actually show this in a minute, but you have to have the credentials that that service broker used to log into CredHub to store those credentials, and if you have those, then you can reach into CredHub, like with the CredHub CLI, and get them out that way. The, en the end goal of CredHub, right, is to um, obfuscate it, right? Um, Somebody's able to CFSSH in, then they're able to get into all your containers, right, and, and be able to see any application environment variables. So the idea here is that, you know, even if you get into the container, you can't see any credentials, right? Your operators, maybe they're lazy, maybe they're great, whatever, but they <coughs> didn't disable it for production, and now they can get into that application and they can actually see those production level database credentials that's a problem, right? Um, even if they disable that, then there's other ways to get in there, and if there are cups, right? So we'll also talk a little about uh, user-provided services and how those work with CredHub. Um, so we'll, we'll just keep moving. Yeah, and like I said, ultimately they're in the application memory, so this Spring Boot actuator endpoint knows how to mask things that it thinks look like they're sensitive, uh, but ultimately they're in application memory. If you're running the application and have the ability to, for example, debug the application, then you're gonna be able to get to them. Eventually, the application has to get raw credentials. Okay, so that's all around managed uh, services and service brokers. So um, we said that your applications don't have to change to know anything about CredHub, but service brokers do have to change. Service brokers have to be modified so that they're aware that CredHub is there, and most of them are implementing a, a, a flag in the service broker configuration to tell it, do you want me to store credentials in CredHub or just return them raw? Um, so service brokers are gonna have to adapt to this and implement that CredHub integration. 
Okay, uh, so the other user workflow is, um, if you're familiar with user-provided services in Cloud Foundry, they're a way to provide credentials for services that are running outside of Cloud Foundry, and the most typical example is you've got a big Oracle database that's been around forever. It's run and managed completely outside of Cloud Foundry, but applications running in Cloud Foundry need to get access to that database. How you would typically do that in Cloud Foundry is to use a user-provided service where you create a service instance and you're providing uh, in the CF create user provided service command what these raw credentials are. Um, so you really want a way to be able to store cred credentials in CredHub and then expose those in a user provided service way also. And uh, the way that you do that is um, the other service broker that we have installed here is a service broker called Secure Credentials. And this service broker is in the, the Cloud Foundry org on GitHub. And it works uh, pretty similarly, similarly to a user-provided service. So we can show you the command we used to create this. So if you see this command, we just did a CF create service and uh, said we want to use the secure credentials broker with that default plan. And we wanted to uh, create a, a credential that has a, a password in it. And we gave it the raw value for the password here. And then in the... Uh, in the UI app, we've bound that service to the UI app. Um, so if I do a CF ENV on the UI app, we're going to see in there that it's got this one credential that's the secure credential. So it's working really like the Spring Cloud Services case is. Uh, it's just providing that for the uh, user provided services use case. And we can show an example here. Uh, so kind of to Nick's question, um, there is this CredHub CLI that uh, Peter talked about, and I can use the CredHub CLI and I can log into CredHub. In this case, we've gone into the deployment of that secure services uh, service broker. We've pulled out the UAA client ID that it's using to authenticate to CredHub with, and we're gonna use the CredHub CLI to log in with that service broker's credentials. Something's changed there. Hmm. It all looks right to me. Me too. It's okay. We'll leave it on network see, on see. conference Wi-Fi? Sure. Okay. Do CredHub get, see if we can get the credential out of there. Yeah, maybe we're still logged in. Um, so once we're logged in, we should be able to do this uh, get and pull the value of that credential out of CredHub. Is that gonna work? Oh, now I was thinking we're not logged in because we tried to log in and failed. Do current up find. Find, find. Try the find. Okay. I think it's going to think we're not logged in now. Mm -hmm. uh, we're oh, targeting, no okay. We're targeting the wrong thing. Yep. Let's just do this. All right. Try it again. Uh, what do we want to do? Log in? All right. No, no, I don't have it. Let's grab it. See, it's all live, guys. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay. So now, I guess we got to go over this other window and. So this is, you know, we're, we're logging in here to Cred Hub. That's, so this is the internally. Um, deployed for us, CredHub inside of Cloud Foundry that's already there for you in, um, I don't know what, Cloud Foundry version 0 0.36, I think, CF release 3.6. Um, and so what we're doing is we're authenticating with that, and then we're actually listing credentials. So here you can see all those credentials that have been created. So these have been created. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so we've got um, these credentials created by the secure credentials broker, and then we've got all these credentials that were created by Spring Cloud Services. Um, so the ones ending in credentials JSON here are the full JSON payload for VCAP services, but Spring Cloud Services also uses CredHub to generate some usernames and passwords and client secrets. Um, so there's a lot more credentials you'll see in here. Uh, but this one from the secure credentials broker 
I have a hard time selecting stuff on Peter's laptop here. Here, select that for me. Yep. There we go. All right, there you go. So then we can do cred hub get dash in and get that credential. Okay, that's the one the broker stored. Let's get this other one. Oh yeah, there we go. So you could see this for all the credentials, right? So if you're using CredHub for Concourse, then you could come into that CredHub and you'd actually see the CredHub, the, all the credentials that you'd be using in Concourse, right? So this is sort of your, you know, every single um, CredHub instance, you know, you can use a CLI to talk to, or you can use mutual TLS and talk to that that way. Um, yeah, go ahead. Just do it again. That one should work. Demoing on somebody else's laptop is kind of like trying to run a race in somebody else's shoes. It's always fun. You're doing great, man. So there we can see that we fetched that credential from CredHub, and we can see what that value is. Um, if I were to try to pull one of these other credentials from in here, um, I would basically get a, one of these created with P Spring Cloud Services. Uh, the CLI would tell me that I don't have authorization to get those because I'm not using the same credentials with the CLI that Spring Cloud Services used to log into CredHub and store them to begin with. So that's getting to that permissions level. Each of these credentials that you see here um, has very fine-grained permissions on it that determines who's allowed to read those credentials, who's allowed to write them, and who's allowed to change permissions on them um, based on the service broker that wrote them or um, if you're writing them yourself with the CLI. Yeah. That's all the content that we have. Here's a little plug for uh, Spring One Conference that's going to be in Washington, D.C. this year in September. Um, the most interesting thing on this slide is this discount code in the lower right-hand corner here. If you're interested in going, that's a code you can use uh, to get $100 off uh, for coming to this conference. And with that, we can take any questions. questions? Are we doing on time? <laughs> yes. Uh, no, that's because, so the question is, is CredHub a single point of failure? Is HA taken into account here? Yes, it is, um, and the reason is, is all the credentials are stored in a MySQL database, that is HA, okay? Uh, that's number one. Number two is you can deploy, right? CredHub is made to be deployed with two instances, so if you lose an instance, then you're good to go. Um, you're still, still requests will still be going through to get those credentials out. Um, as long as you have multiple AZs with your deployment, you should be all set. Just deploy a CredHub in every AZ. Sure. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I, I just to tail on that question. Would one of those be like read replicas and then there will be single master? Uh, it's the typical CF deployment MySQL, right? So it's the same. It's all stored in that, that general MySQL. You could make it however you want, right? So. I mean, we're at Open Source Cloud Foundry Summit, so you know, however you want to deploy your CF uh, SQL will work. Yeah, so the CF deployment yep. Bosch release will do it one way, but if you want to go nuts with your own Bosch release and deploy your databases in. I was just saying if like one question was writing, like if you were sending multiple questions, you just have that single question, the other one was like reading from the database? Hmm, I see what you're asking. How, how is the writing and reading done with CredHub? Um, it's a good question. I can definitely table that and have the PM answer it for you. <laughs> sure. Sure. Okay, here. So um, it sounds like applications won't need to change. They're going to still look at the environment variables to pull in uh, credentials. But I don't understand. How, do you, like, how can I SSH and not see the environment? <laughs> like, what's the magic happening there? Yeah. When Peter and I first did this talk at Spring One last December, and we were actually surprised when we see if SSH and didn't see the raw credentials. So then we had to start digging into these layers inside containers and garden to figure out how that magic is happening. And it, it gets a little deep into Cloud Foundry internals. It's mostly, when you do a CFSSH, right, it's going through the control plane of Cloud Foundry, right? And so they have access to block out credentials if you don't, okay. you know? And so okay. essentially it's, it's all getting done by the magic in You're, in you're not quite into that garden container yet when you right. do CFSSH as kind of the high level answer. Yep. So I can still create my application that's going to read the environment variables and dump them out to the uh, logs and do something. You could do that. You could gladly. Like that, right? 
You sure. could still do something stupid. You could yeah. put this spring cloud actuator endpoint in there and enable that without security in production if you wanted to, but that's not Cred the recommended not way a, to do it. You know, it's, yeah. doesn't solve your stupidity. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more. If people have their own Cred Hub um, sure. uh, credentials management outside of CF, mm -hmm. Yep, it's totally Absolutely. possible. Yeah, yep. uh, you we know, have some I customers would... doing that now. I've yeah. had a question. There's a, a little project mm -hmm. called Spring Cred Hub. It's like a spring mapping to the Cred Hub API, and there are some people who are doing that. They're deploying their own yeah. Cred Hub separately outside of the one in Bosch and the one in in Cloud Foundry application runtime, and then they're using it for stuff completely outside of these workflows. We so that's about. really helpful for like operations teams, right? I know a lot of ops teams are using like Vault and different things for, for that kind of, and if you're trying to remain sort of agnostic with, with operations and what developers are gonna be using with CF, um, you can deploy your own cred hub, right? Just with the uh, open source Bosch outside, right? And then you can use that for anything, right? You could use it for Concourse, you could use it for Bosch itself, you could use it for any of your Bosch deployed things. You can actually create a client that would, right? It's just a REST API. You can create a client that pulls all the creds out. There's a CLI for it, right? So there's all this, um, all this ecosystem around cred hub, so. And I mentioned Spring cred hub. I should also Spring mention cred if you hub. saw in the uh, keynote last night in that uh, really cool .NET presentation, there's also a .NET client for the cred hub API. So with, yeah. with both Java and .NET, you've got nice ways to write apps that talk directly to cred hub. Yeah. Right, I think we're out of time. We better wrap it up, but we can. Yeah, we can definitely take more questions offline. Scott's awesome. <laughs>